Are you tired of the same old tourist traps in New York? Today, we're going way off the beaten path to show you seven more hidden gems and secret places in the Big Apple that you won't find in many guidebooks. Watch till the end and make sure to tell me in the comments which of these spots you most want to visit. Here we go. What looks like a parking spot behind me in Chelsea is actually one of New York's best stores for stuff you didn't know you needed. Trust me, we're gonna check this out. The owner is named Jerry the Junk Man and they have a collection of a lot of random items that would look perfect in your apartment. Let's go. Too many food videos for me. Guys, this is for sale, but the hardest part is gonna be getting out. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're actually doing this right now. <laughs> you could fit this in your apartment, you should buy this. Old license plates, always in style. This, this is I think where I would actually head to buy something for the wall. You have the vintage movie posters. I am all about this. I'm actually excited. <laughs> this is such a cool store. Japanese video game is for Kemco. Probably the strangest item I've seen here, a morgue table for $425. As it says, people are dying for a table like this. Important note, the store is called No Particular Hours and they don't have set hours, so you must check their Instagram for when they're open, putting that information down below in the description. This store is amazing, I love it. We're standing right in front of 33 Thomas Street, and behind me is one of the strangest skyscrapers in New York City. It's 29 stories tall, has no windows, just some protruding vents, and at night, it's completely dark. It was originally designed by John Carl Warnicke in 1974 as a building to be inhibited by machines designed to house telephone equipment and to protect its personnel in the event of an atomic attack. It's solid concrete covered in heat resistant granite and built without a single vulnerable window. Officially, it's called the AT&T Long Lines building that houses data servers. There's a lot of speculation though, which is not officially confirmed that this building is called Titan Point, which according to rumor, the NSA uses for surveillance on the American public of phone calls and data. Whatever the case may be, this building looks straight out of a dystopian novel, especially without any lights on at night. It's been featured in movies, it's been on the X-Files, who knows what secrets actually lurk inside. This alley behind me may look familiar to you because it's been featured in countless New York City movies and TV shows. It's called Cortland Alley between Canal and Franklin Streets. And a lot of people think that Manhattan is full of alleys like this, but actually they are really rare. Philly, Boston, sure, but Manhattan, Nope, and that's why it's a favorite of TV and film directors. So if you wanna look cool to your friends back home walking through a deserted alley in New York City, this is definitely the place for you. This is where the bad guy is about to jump out at any second from right there. I don't know if this was used by a TV show, but that looks like the police chalk of a body. If you're a fan of Broadway shows and you wanna to go to the source where a lot of costumes are bought, check out the Feather Place located above me on the third floor in the Garment District. This place sources different costumes for Broadway, carnivals, burlesque shows, and a lot of people have never heard of it. Well, until today. You actually have to call them to get in. I feel like we're about to go to a speakeasy bar right now. Seriously, if you are going to any sort of a costume party, you want that 1920s look, you can come here for this and you're not gonna find these sorts of items at your average costume shop, trust me. I mean, these are the sorts of items that you're gonna see on shows and you can buy them for yourself. Look at my head. I just became like a rooster. 
can't even recognize you anymore. I don't know what you are. You're just ve you're just very colorful. You'd be the you'd be the life of the party right now. Yep. Elton John would be so ashamed if he sees me walking down the street like this. He'd be like, "Wow, that guy just completely beat my fashion." If you're new to this channel and you're enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time we have a new video out. Okay, so for our next stop, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to get here. You can take the subway to 181st Street or GPS to Plaza Lafayette, then find this overpass less than a block away. Follow me, I'll show you the rest of the way. We are gonna follow this path until we get to the park this way. Follow this path around, you can't miss it. The Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, they get all the attention, but honestly, the GW Bridge, from this view, is very nice. You can start to see the lighthouse from here. And this is the Little Red Lighthouse, one of the last remaining lighthouses in Manhattan. And as I said, the fun part is getting here. It was built in Sandy Hook, New Jersey in 1889, moved here in 1921 before the GW Bridge was even built. 10 years later, it was operational until 1947, and it's now in the National Register of Historic Places. Occasionally, there are tours that you can take with the Parks Department, but I just like coming down here and admiring a lighthouse under the George Washington Bridge. There's something very romantic about this, something unexpected, an amazing place certainly to take photos, and definitely just to go for a little hike to see something very unique. We're standing in front of the New York Buddhist Church on the Upper West Side, and this statue behind me has more historical significance than most people realize. It's called Shinran. It's a bronze Japanese monk, and it survived the blast in Hiroshima. In fact, this statue was one and a half miles from the epicenter of the blast in 1945. It stood while the rest of the city burned. The residents of Hiroshima were very proud of the statue and all that it went through. And the rumor goes that Japanese school children used to hold their breath walking by this statue because they were afraid of radiation. In fact, you can even see little red marks on the statue. That is from the blast, radiation marks. Now, it was donated to the United States in 1955 by a Japanese industrialist with one message. No more Hiroshima's. I agree. This is the 191st Street subway station, and the entrance behind me leads to one of the most colorful, graffiti-filled tunnels you're ever gonna see in New York City. It stretches 1,000 feet under Washington Heights into the subway station. It's incredible. Let's go take a look. I've definitely never seen a subway station quite like this one. <laughs> in the city. Man, like every every inch of this tunnel is covered. I've seen street art museums before in the city, and I find this in some ways more interesting. <laughs> ben was just saying he's surprised this wasn't in the movie Joker. It totally fits that vibe actually. And then you can take the subway home. Make sure to hit that like button and tell me in the comments which one of these sites you are most likely to visit. I'm curious. Special shout out to my camera guy, Ben. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.